Friday, we have this reception and every month we feature a different group of artists here. This month, it's the Watercolor Society of Indiana and next month, it's Emerging Artists. And tonight, in honor of the Watercolor Society of Indiana, I have convinced its executive director, Tanya, to talk to us about what she does and what the Watercolor Society of Indiana represents. And I thought it would be a good idea to interview Tanya simply because the people who run the show don't always get enough credit. In fact, they seldom get enough credit for the work that they do. So please tell everyone about the Watercolor Society of Indiana, what kind of organization it is, what its goals are, and how many members do we currently have statewide? That's an easy one. The watercolor. <laughs> I, I, I started yeah. with the easy I was, one. Yeah. I feel like I'm on a game show. Uh, <laughs> the Watercolor Society of Indiana serves the entire state. We have over 260 members currently across all of Indiana. Um, our mission is to educate, celebrate, um, promote watercolors um, with everyone from young artists, beginning artists, to showcasing our um, more experienced professional artists. That's pretty good. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, question number two. Mm -hmm. What do you enjoy most about being the executive director of the Watercolor Society of Indiana? What I enjoy most, um, I have met so many incredible people, artists um, from here in Indiana and then artists from international artists that have come and it is so inspiring. And it's always inspiring even today seeing there's some new names of people I have not had a chance to meet yet, but my favorite part of the job are the events with the people and the artists. Do you have a least favorite part of the job? QuickBooks. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh -huh. How about fundraising? Fundraising is good. It's hard. It's, it's probably one of the hardest things about the job is fundraising. Um, so I'm personally trying to I, add more sponsorship opportunities so that there's more to give back with fundraising. A fundraising we have, uh, as a nonprofit, we rely on fundraising. Um, and so we ha were able to give away $9,000 in awards this year because we had such gracious members and um, people in the community. And that's challenging. It's challenging to get people to donate cash. Um, a lot of times we do, can do trade. Um, but yeah, fundraising is challenging, but it's very important and hoping to make it more, like we publicize our donors in the catalog and the website and social media. We try to give as much recognition. Um, so hoping to do more of that in the future. You are both the executive director and you are also an artist member mm -hmm. of the Watercolor Society. How long have you been the director mm -hmm. and what enticed you to take this job? Well, I have been the executive director since March 1st of 2021, so I'm going into my third year. Um, I am a member artist. I have been told that executive directors in the past were not member artists, but I am a member. Um, I have a painting here today <laughs> um, because I like to support uh, the arts and the society. Um, what enticed me for this position is because my background is in business and marketing and this position allowed me to do that while staying in the um, art community and still being able to uh, celebrate the arts. I've read that as an artist and I read I read it because you wrote it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've read that as an artist you've worked with acrylics, mm -hmm. you've worked with glass fusing, with mosaics, mm -hmm. with clay, mm -hmm. and now you've added watercolor to the mix. Mm -hmm. Is any one of these areas of working in art your favorite? 
Mosaics are my favorite. In fact, I can include clay in that. I used to make my own mosaic pieces out of clay. I have a kiln um, playing with the glazes and then breaking the pieces and turning them into a mosaic is my favorite. Because? Um, maybe because it's more hands-on, um, but it's also to me, it's taking something like the broken pieces and all the colors and then putting them together and making them into something new. I and really what, enjoy. what kinds of new things have you made them into? Oh, the designs. Yes, yeah. the designs. Um, well, my, in my garage, which used to be hanging outside my studio, but in my garage I have a big three foot by four foot mosaic of just a flower. Um, but I like to do a lot of, um, just col lots of color. Color's my favorite, so I do abstract. Um, but I do like flowers, and I like landscapes, and I've done some projects, but if I was to sit down and just kind of do a mosaic, I like to just kind of go with a color theme and just make it just bright and fun. At one point, you had a mobile art studio. Mm -hmm. Would you tell us, please, a bit about that experience and what you liked about it? Yes, my mobile art studio is called uh, Painting with Tanya, and it was my version of Wine and Canvas, where I would take all of the easels and canvases and brushes um, around the, the, the city to restaurants or homes or schools or community centers and turn it into a party, turn it into an art studio um, where people could bring their own wine or whatever beverage of choice and I brought music and I'd play you know between instructions it'd be step by step it was very laid back very uh, more fun where I kept telling people this is not a class this is a party so it was more about just you know having fun with it was canvas painting so it was a lot easier than watercolors yeah uh, so but just uh, having a making it more into social events so I did that for several years and for for three years or I did that for several years I um, I actually still have people who ask me if I will, uh, and I recently had a party for my friends. Um, but yeah, it's just something that's still in my garage if it ever comes back to me. <laughs> or you could invite people into your garage. Yeah, yeah. So we could have a party in my garage. Yeah, that'd be okay, I'd come. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what future goals do you see for the Watercolor Society of Indiana? Uh, growth. Um, expansion, um, moving to all corners, all cities, all counties of the state, um, reaching as far as we can t um, to artists all over the state. So growth, um, more exhibits, more workshops, um, more levels of workshops. We have started doing inter um, beginner with our big international artists that come in and so just doing more. Yes, there have been several workshops this year, mm -hmm. yeah, that have been sponsored by the Watercolor Society with artists who have come in from all kinds of different places. Yep, from Dallas, or from Texas, um, but from, you know, ever places around the country, and then we also are starting to try and give our own members um, some opportunities to teach. So to we've teach, had some yeah. workshops with our members, too, yes. teaching them. Okay. Anything else you'd like to add? Uh, <laughs> Here's your chance. You got a mic. You can I talk. Know. You know. Do we, are we doing? Q never a? give it. Never give a teacher a no. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> no, no, we're not. <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> never give a teacher a mic. Come on. <laughs> right. Yeah. I should know. Yeah. Yes. Anything else you want to add? Though, um, about? No. I just. Uh, I'm excited to see all the faces here tonight, uh, and all the art and. Really just, I am lucky that I get to have a job that I, I love and I get to still paint and I get to still um, sometimes be the boss, not all the time, <laughs> but sometimes. <laughs> Ladies and yeah. gentlemen, Tanya Roberts.